So one little problem here, I'm lost. So we are currently in DC rush hour traffic here. I don't exactly live in these conditions and so I didn't really time things just right. But we got a tip about an Eastern Screech Owl. In fact, it's a red morph of an Eastern Screech Owl. It's a beautiful little bird. We found a, uh, a nest or somebody else found a nest um, and sent us GPS coordinate. And so with this, uh, with this situation, with the uniqueness of this being a red morph Screech Owl, we decided to basically drop everything we were doing, jump in the truck and hightail it to the other side of uh, Washington DC to try and find this nest here so uh, if we can make it through the traffic here I think it will be good uh, we've got a little bit of Sun right now which isn't exactly what we want it's really in a forested situation we want to be photographing with an overcast sky but this uh, the forecast for the area is for increasing clouds throughout the day so uh, we're gonna get in there we're gonna get set up and see how it goes So even though the Eastern Screech Owl is considered to be a nocturnal species, in the wintertime like this, they're actually visible during the daytime. And that's because they'll make their way on a relatively warm winter day or a sunny winter day, they'll make their way up to the edge of their cavity and sit there and perch and sleep to try and absorb some of that sun's warmth. And so even though these guys typically are active at nighttime and that's when they're hunting and that's when they're out and about, in the winter months like this, we can actually get out into the woods and locate their cavities a lot of times by the presence of them sitting right at the entrance there sleeping. And so that's what we're out here looking for. So even though we got a tip as to the basic location or the general location of this owl, the responsibility still comes to us to try and actually locate this guy. And in these deciduous hardwood forests like this, cavities are very abundant. Um, and so we're basically just walking around slowly but surely, looking up into the trees, trying to find a place where an old branch is broken off of a tree and a specific cavity has been formed for this guy to stay inside of. One of the reasons that mature deciduous forests are so important to the health and wealth and the survival of so many species of wildlife is simply because of the presence of natural cavities like the one that we're looking for right now. So in today's world, we tend to think of the screech owl as being a secondary cavity nester, meaning which they take over an old or an abandoned woodpecker cavity to be able to survive. But in these mature forests like this, we can actually find plenty of natural cavities available for them to choose from. And so that's why these mature forests are so critical for the survival of species and why we need to do everything we can to protect this sort of ecosystem right here. So all I'm doing is walking around trying to find a natural cavity like that. Photographing an owl nest like this can be a very sensitive situation and so we want to do everything we can to protect the well-being of that owl. And so first and foremost, we want to absolutely positively limit our presence in the area as much as possible. I've spent a considerable amount of time in the forest looking for and photographing owl nests. So anytime I'm photographing in a situation like this, I try and set up my equipment and get myself out of there as quickly as possible. And so in order to be able to do this without actually being behind my camera, without actually having my presence there to disturb the animal, what that means is I have to be able to control my camera remotely. So anytime I'm working in a sensitive situation like this, I like to use one of these guys right here. It's called a cam ranger. And what this guy does is it allows me to communicate with my camera over a Wi-Fi signal to be able to control all of the functions of my camera remotely. I can actually stay back 100 to 150 feet away from a denning site or an owl nest, for instance, and have full control over my camera. I can adjust ISO with the light. I can adjust my focusing. I can look at a live histogram 
and I can see everything that's going on right through my iPhone or from my iPad or even from my computer if the situation calls for being able to set up something like that. So over the years I have found that animals are much quicker to accept the presence of my camera and my tripod as opposed to me standing there. If I were to pop out in front of this owl's nest and he sticks his head out and he sees me, he's going to go right back down inside of there. However, when he comes out and he sees this camera standing there, maybe something about the shape of it just doesn't say predator. It just doesn't say danger. Maybe it blends in with the natural landscape of the forest to some degree. And that's what it really oftentimes boils down to. It's not so much about camouflage. It's just simply a matter of not actually fitting what an animal has in their brain as a predator. So when you're photographing in a sensitive scenario, this is something you really want. You want to be able to limit your presence as much as possible there at the site. And so we need to be able to remotely control our cameras. And there's several different products on the market today. The Cam Ranger like this is just one of those. There's other companies such as Tether Tools as well. Personally, I haven't used that product yet, but I have been using the Cam Ranger for many years now, and I can absolutely say I love this product right here. If you're a wildlife photographer, this is something you need. This is an absolutely fantastic little device. Currently, there's two different models of this. This is the full-size Cam Ranger right here, and then there's also the Cam Ranger Mini. Supposedly, at the end of 2019, there's going to be a Cam Ranger 2 that comes out, but that's not available just yet, so I haven't had the opportunity to test it and see if it's any different or not. But right now, this little guy right here runs about $300 and works perfect for what I need. So the beautiful thing about using something like the Cam Ranger is that it allows us to ultimately remove ourselves from the situation and therefore cause much less stress on an animal. Again, these are very sensitive situations here and so the less time that we can physically spend in front of a nest or in front of a denning site the better. We don't want to jeopardize these animals ability to survive in the wild. There's all sorts of possibilities that can occur by us spending too much time there. Not only does it cause too much stress on an animal it can ultimately cause them to abandon a nesting or a denning site. It can also attract predators that would otherwise come through here and so for a screech owl what does that look like? Let's say a raccoon, let's say a possum or let's say even a great horn owl at nighttime. But as you can see from the photos of this screech owl, by me removing myself from the situation and controlling my camera remotely, this animal was comfortable enough to come back out to the edge of its cavity and literally go to sleep right in front of my camera. That is the ultimate sign that we did our job as a respectful and ethical wildlife photographer or videographer in the field. If an animal feels comfortable enough to reapproach you and to go to sleep in front of your lens, you've done everything right. We're not